Ah, response video to Laura Layla, I believe. Um, yeah, she was talking on this uh, consciousness subject, sort of. And, uh, you know, she, she, the way she started the video was to imply, kind of, at least my interpretation, um, that people need to pay more attention to their psychological reactions to things, or that there's somehow a greater value in that instrument of understanding known as our emotional response. And uh, I don't know if she really said that in the rest of her video or demonstrated that. She talked more about how to deal with um, the circumstance of that psychology uh, that can be um, often contrary to your functionality in this society. And that's sort of the argument. Is you know, we are basically living in captivity. I mean, I'm walking in a nice, natural environment, uh, but that's not the native environment. We have to behave in all kinds of ways that are pretty unnatural, um, emotionally, I'm, I would argue. I, I would argue there is some genetic character to our emotions. I mean, some, not much, but some. Uh, like, for example, it's kind of a common response for people to get queasy at the sight of, you know, guts and human innards and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so, I mean, it seems like it's not a conditioned response, one that uh, society imposes, but more that there is some sort of native uh, mechanical process that uh, recognizes that circumstance, and there's probably some evolutionary purpose to it. Um, it'd probably be a good idea for our ancestors not to play with the dead. So it might be a good idea to give them a repulsive reaction to something that is likely to be dead, which is something with its guts showing, um, or likely not to be in very good shape. Anyway, sorry about the noise. Damn rain this morning. It's a wonderful day now. But it's rained like hell and created all kinds of mayhem. I mean, I wanted to get some underwater, you know, camera pictures. And I keep getting thwarted. And it's every time the, you know, I just can't get the, the weather to match the condition of the stream. So, anyway, it's just irritating. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, go right. So now moving on to the rest of our um, emotional responses, which are conditioned in this very unnatural environment. I've sort of said this before, but, you know, in nature, you don't go to school. You don't have to be polite in a restaurant. You don't have to do all these different things that we're maturated into. You know, driving cars. Yeah, yeah. We do all kinds of things that create all kinds of dispositions in us through experience through those things. And some of us take to domestication better than others, or civilization, uh, depending on that native disposition. For example, if you're susceptible to car sickness, which would probably be a genetic component, uh, your life experiences will change because all kinds of experiences that you might have had that would be pleasant are psychologically unpleasant because of that malady. Uh, so we can all have vulnerabilities like that that will condition our psychology and uh, turn positive experiences into negative. And I suppose there's some vice versa there when it comes to uh, people who are subject to abuse and uh, they start creating mental associations with uh, you know, different mechanisms of anger that might uh, uh, control or, or ameliorate against their feeling of weakness and defeat and vulnerability. And so then they develop a psychology that sort of feeds on anger and revenge or some other kind of mechanism. And they emotionally get conditioned by those experiences. So anyway, her video, she's basically talking about, uh, you know, suppression of emotion. I, I don't know if there's any active 
real suppression. There's just the idea that there is unpleasant sensation and we inherently try to avoid that. So there's parts of our psychology where we shut down as soon as that, as soon as there's an association, uh, it's like we just run away. It's, it's not really covering it up. It's not suppressing it. We just run away from it. And the idea that facing it will solve your problems, I, I think is uh, not entirely correct. Uh, yeah, face it if you have me if you have tools to defeat it. So if you're going to go to battle with your old conditioning, like say you have some negative association with yellow because that color was the color that your most hated teacher wore. Uh, so now you decide I'm going to go to battle with that innate conditioning, this this lifetime conditioning where I have this very negative response to the color yellow. Um, you really can't do that unless you have some new tool that uh, you can use not only to deal with the past in terms of accepting it, um, but uh, accept that it beat you in the past, I guess is part of it too. But you have to come up with positive reinforcements. So for this case of the color yellow, that might be really easy. You just start painting your favorite things yellow, you start having positive experiences, and everything's okay. But there's lots of psychology where you're not gonna, it's not gonna be that easy. The association is gonna be more complicated and uh, the only way to recondition yourself is going to be to immerse yourself in the, in the thing that you find repulsive. So it's almost like the prospective surgeon who has a queasiness at the sight of blood. Well, he's just gonna have to immerse himself in it, get sick a few times, uh, feel lousy and uncomfortable until he can break that negative association. Uh, but he has to really be motivated and he also has to be able to endure the unpleasantness in some sort of positive way. So in the end, he has to create a positive reinforcement like, uh, yeah, I successfully accomplished the autopsy or whatever the thing is uh, to justify his discomfort or he might end up just reinforcing his negative disposition and his native uh, reflex. So anyway, another, another part of this is like uh, vertigo because I, I've, I've acquired that and I've been working on desensitizing myself and I've also thought about how I acquired it. Does it seem like it showed up one day? And that's kind of like what conditioning does. It just shows up. All of a sudden you're conditioned. All of a sudden it's there. And you're not necessarily given a road map of exactly how it got there. But when I think about it, I can think about a couple of instances. One time where I almost fell off a roof. Uh, another time when I was on a roof and I panicked. Uh, another time I was on a ladder with a chainsaw and the tree moved after I cut the limb off and, uh, you know, I, I had definitely had this fear reaction, this, this innate, you know, save yourself kind of reaction that no doubt my brain had associated with the height and started creating or recreating that native uh, impulse to be wary of heights. I mean, we have, we're sort of born with that one so that's one our brain can easily revisit. Uh, oh, music, very irritating. <sighs> Rich people playing poor man's music. Anyway, um, and yeah, where was I? Yeah, so this vertigo thing is kind of weird because you know I'm trying to positive reinforce my way out of it by you know climbing trees or getting up on a roof, be positive about it. Don't let it get to me, don't be nervous, don't be did it. Make sure I feel comfortable and don't allow myself to be vulnerable to any reoccurring negative association. Um, but yeah, it just takes, it takes an awful lot of time. I haven't accomplished the task yet. And, uh, but that's the problem. Conditioning is, emotional conditioning is hard to rewire. 
once you once you got it, you're kind of stuck with a lot of it because the road map out is just not going to be uh, intuitive or obvious. It's going to require some sort of. Sometimes it requires a flooding, uh, you know, a complete immersal in the in the thing that produces the the reaction. Uh, so yeah. But anyway, the bottom line is, what I wanted to get to, which I haven't gotten to, is that I don't think emotions have much value. They are generally irrational, excessive, extreme, exaggerated, hysterical. Uh, they go over the top, and they go below the bottom, and they just, they're just a mess. So I don't think they have any value in terms of helping a human being see the truth or rationally deal with a circumstance. I think they do just get in the way. I think the Vulcan philosophy, uh, at least the, the half Vulcan <laughs> ideal of, uh, you know, purging yourself of uh, subjective reaction, emotion, when it comes to attempting to be thoughtful and intelligent about analyzing a circumstance um, is entirely an incredibly valuable uh, mechanism. People have to uh, ignore as much as they can their native preferences and prejudices, their native comforts, their native discomforts. They have to appreciate that uh, what they think of nature or what they think of civilization or what they what, what what situations make them feel is not necessarily what it's making someone else feel uh, and they have to be able to bend uh, their understanding to appreciate what it would be like to model in their head what it would be like to uh, have a very different disposition and to exist in a circumstance and I think once people do that they will be better able to appreciate just how imperfect life is, how sloppy it is, uh, how dangerous it is, because it does leave many people in very uncomfortable, um, painful circumstances. So I think that's enough of a video now. Sorry, just looking about in the mud, see what's squirming and such. Anyway, till next time. Little green and black dragonfly. They call it something else, actually. Can't remember what. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. I think that is it. See, the water's too murky for tamarind. Damn it. Alright, until next time. And such.